Hi everyone, um, welcome to um, this NAV Know How for 2013 and above. Um, please could you mute your microphones if, you are, um, if you've got them enabled. So today what we're going to be dealing with is how to create a test system in NAV 2013, 2013 R2, 2015 and 2016. Um, because the method to do this is the same pretty much for all of them. Um, well, I'm going to be doing it in 2016, um, so it gives you a bit of, you can see what it looks like as well. Alright, so let's begin. So we're going to create a test system today by backing up my live um, database. And we're going to create a test database. We're going to create a test service or have a look at using our, an existing test service to connect the database up. Um, we're going to look at the import worksheet and some of the best practices involved with that. And then after, I'll have a bit of a Q&A. So if anyone has any questions, they can always let me know. Also, this has been recorded, so I'm going to put it on our blog. So you guys can look at it at your own leisure. All right. So let me show you first. Um, here's my 2016 database. This is my Cronus uh, live database for me. It's all being run off my PC, um, off my own SQL server on my laptop. Now, if we have a look at it in SQL Server, it's actually called Demo Database 90. So what we're going to do first is take a backup of this. So um, either yourself or IT department can just take a backup of the database in SQL Server Management Studio. Um, and that's under the, the Databases folder. So Tasks, Backup. We're going to choose a location to save the database to. So I'll just put, put it in ctemp for the time being. And I'll just call it nav 2016 test. And when that's going to drop the database out to there. We don't need to change anything in here. So once I'm happy, OK. And if we go have a look in ctemp, we can see this is ticking away at, um, oh, that's that quick. It's 100% now. We do OK. And there's our database dropped into here, and you can see the date modified was 11.32. Right, so we've made the backup. Let's restore it back in as a test database. So we can go up to our top level databases, restore database, go to device, uh, hit the ellipsis or the assist edit, and we're going to go find the database fo uh, file, the back file. Um, I haven't given it an extension, but if you just do all files, you'll be able to see it. There it is. So I'm going to pick that up, and it's recognized that there is a backup set in here. We're going to change the destination database name. So this is what we're going to restore it as. Uh, I'll call it nav 2016 test. And if we go over to the files tab, just make sure the name is um, unique. It is unique, um, but I will. I've done this a few times this morning already, so I'm going to just make it four. We're going to turn off tail log. Um, if it is already enabled, just turn it off, and then we're going to do OK. So that's going to go and create our new database. So that should take a moment. OK, good. So now our database has been restored. Um, it's called Nav 2016 Test, so I'll just take, um, we can type this in um, in a moment. I'll just take a copy of the name. So at the moment, this database is, it's there, but we can't actually do anything with it. We could go into our development environment, and we could go and have a look at it, and it's appeared in our list now as an available database. We can even open it from the dev environment, but we wouldn't be able to access it from the RTC environment, and that is because the service which publishes, um, which allows the Rolltailer clients to connect, isn't uh, configured, it isn't turned on. Um, so if we look for the services in here, um, you can ignore that, that's not actually active at the moment. Um, but we don't have a server instance for it. So, you should, everyone should have a test service already installed. Um, this would be done uh, typically, this will be done at the point of implementation. You can always make your own service using the NAV um, administration tool, um, which I have open here. 
and you can also you can always create your own add instance and that creates a new service so here's one I made earlier um, and I think we've got some guides on the blog on how to do it um, but you could just reuse your existing test um, service and in here we need to point the service using the configuration to the new database so in the database tab I'm going to replace the old test database name with my new nav, um, nav test database. That is all I need to change because the service has already been configured for my test um, service. So if we save that and then we go and turn the service on and this is in services.msc so if you do need to know where this is it's um, services.msc you can search for it. Um, alternatively back in the administration tool you can just go and restart the service here as well. Um, however, I like to do it in the services.msc. So once I turn this on, it's going to take the new database name and it's going to publish a publish a service so we can connect into it using a role tailored client. So let's um, see if this works. Okay, it has. We can confirm this works by opening the event viewer. So if you just type in event viewer um, and you press enter, here it is, and under the application um, entries, if you're thinking, oh, why isn't it turning on, you can always look in here and it'll tell you if there's any errors. But I know that the service is actually called, um, that's the service string. And we can also find out from within the database itself, in, in the dev environment, if we open it, we can actually go to database information and it will give us the string as well. So we know that's active now and it's working okay. So we've restored our test database. We've connected it up using our service, which should already exist. Um, but if it doesn't, you can add a new one. We've checked in the dev environment and we can see that there's the string for it. So now all we need to do is connect to it. So if we'll select the server and I'll drop the string. That should be it. Let me just check. 50,002 test nav 2015. Yeah. Let's give that a moment. And there we go. So, this is a carbon copy of the live database we just took. This includes all users and permissions and yeah, all your data up to that point. Um, so, now what we can do is we can talk about importing some objects to our test database. So, here it is. Um, also, once you've made your test database, you might want to give it a system indicator, which is like a little title that sits here. Um, let's do that because I don't want to get confused and forget that this isn't live because they look identical. We'll just call it test DB in the company information. And we'll give it some accent. You can have a play around. So if I restart this now, I should get um, a label saying test DB, test DB. Let's give it a moment. There we go. So at the top, I now know this is my test DB. Um, so that will always be in the top corner um, on my role center. All right. So let's go and load an object. Okay. So we're going to load an object. Um, so to do that, we're going to open up our test database. Um, we're going to go to File, Import. And we're going to choose our NAV 2016 um, object release. Um, it's saying uh, no conflicts were found, so we could just press yes, but I always like to see the import worksheet, so I'll press no. Uh, this tells you all the objects that are going to be loaded and the object type, you know, report, code units, all of these tables. Okay, we can see here um, there, are, there are actually no conflicts found. Every single version list matches, so this is before, this is after, and every single date modified is the same. If there was a change, um, there would be a difference between them. Um, but on this occasion, I'm happy that there's no changes. Um, so we don't actually need to load it, but if we do replace all anyway, and we do OK. So as standard practice, um, always do replace all, because you don't, um, unless otherwise specified, you, you never want to merge the objects. You only want to um, overwrite them completely. Um, we can also do the same thing with export. We could export one object by highlighting the object and doing file export um, and save. 
let's do one object or we could do multiple objects so we could do a filter um, 204 to 215 and we could select all using um, control A or just clicking in here file export 204 to 215 okay so um, if we just recap on what we've looked at, we've created a test system using the SQL Server Management Studio. We've backed up the, our database, and we've also done a restore on the database file for the new one. We've restored it in our 2016 test. We've then pointed the new service um, to it here. We save that. Then we restarted the service here and we started it. We found out what the connection string was by going to database information. There is our connection string and then we were able to connect to it using the Role Taylor client. Um, this is all going on the website. Um, if you have any questions you can always email me. Um, thank you.